One minute warning. One minute warning. Yeah, we need to move this along. There's football on now. I know. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Um, thanks for hanging out a little bit longer uh, than, than church normally is. I was told I have to get this going because there's football on. Um, I do love football, but as I told that person, I, Patriots aren't in it, so I don't care. So, uh, no, I'm kind of I'm kidding. Uh, hey, let me open us up in prayer real quick first, and then we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, God, thank you so much for just giving us an opportunity to put together a budget. Uh, thank you for allowing us to be a, a church that tries to broadcast who you are, uh, and that, that costs money. And so, Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to serve you, to make you known, uh, to go to bend and beyond and, and, and strive to make disciples. Uh, Lord, we're so thankful for that. We love you, and in your name we pray. Amen. Um, I have a mic because we're actually recording this. We're not live streaming it onto our Facebook page, but we're live streaming it. So if anybody comes up afterward and says they, they missed in one update, I'm just going to send them the link. So if you're wondering why I'm talking on a mic with 20 people, that's why. Uh, but let me explain to you a little bit about how making the budget happens. Um, Sarah, can you go to the next slide for me? Thank you. So, uh, so welcome to the 2023 budget meeting. Here it is. Um, and as I go through this, I want to explain a couple of things about the budget. Then we're going to go through the eight items the budget covers. Kelly and I will alternate. Lexi will come up um, and we'll talk a little bit about this. Um, Sarah, can you go to the next slide, please, for me? So, the budget, the writing's not super big up here, but in November, a budget committee is assembled of Compass Partners. You have to be a partner to be on that committee. Uh, partnership is what we go through to say, yes, I am, I'm, I'm a person that attends Compass. This is my home church, and I'm working to, and I agree to help move this forward. So, you have to be a Compass Partner to be part of that committee. Um, and that includes at least one elder and one staff member. Um, in November and December, that budget committee gathers budget proposals from ministry leaders, that's the eight areas you'll see on this paper budget, um, from the ministry leaders that lead those areas and composes a monthly and yearly budget to the elders. So they put it together and they pass it on to the elders for approval. In December, the budget goes through an analyzation process by the elder board, edited as needed, and approved for 1231. This, this was approved at our December uh, elder board meeting, which was December 17th or 16th or something along those, somewhere around there. So, uh, go to the next slide for me, Sarah. Thank you so much. Uh, the budget's broken up into eight sections called teams. Each team has individual areas of need which are numbered. So, each section will have a 100 category, a 200 category, so forth and so on. And then underneath that, so those subcategories will be 101, 102, 103. This is how we send our budget to the person who does our accounting so they can keep track of how much we're spending. 
Um, each team has a leader that proposes the financial need for the ministry. We'll talk about who leads that ministry team. And then the budget goes through numerous examinations before it is approved by the elder board in late December. So this budget has been approved. Today's just an explanation so people know where our money goes. And we want to be really open with that. All right. With that being said, we're going to start off with Kelly. Kelly's going to go through the 100 section of this budget and talk a little bit about what those sections are and how much money we have there. Okay, <clears throat> the 100 section is worship and celebration. And so you see there's a monthly and yearly total on that. And just because there is a monthly total or yearly total doesn't mean that that needs to be spent. And you're going to find out through the course of our budget that there are some budget items that we've budgeted for that we don't presently have. But in case we have them, we want to have money set aside for that. So it starts off with signage and advertising. And um, that is a lot. It seems like a really high amount, but the, some of that advertising has to do with the Internet. And so we pay for that, and so that's what that would be going for. The other is like any new sign that we put up or have made, they're not that inexpensive. And then also we just ordered, for example, like invitation cards, like 500 of them um, to hand out, to be ready for like Easter and then pass in, and all of that would come out of that signage and advertising. Um, the supplies would be basically like the supplies we need for a Sunday morning service. And that would include like food and anything along that line, like the donuts we give out, coffee and all those kind of things that we hand out. That all comes out of that on Sunday morning. Communion comes out of that. And uh, so that's what that is. And then appreciation is we, um, like if it's somebody's big anniversary or somebody, something like that, we might have a gift from the church. Some flowers we send out to people if they, you know, have uh, something going on, a big event in their life, and that would come out of that. So that's kind of what those three categories are about. And like you say, uh, like Matt said, when we all get billed, we put a number on our receipt and then when we send that into the accountant, the accountant then looks and takes the money out of the right account. So that helps us at the end of the year to have a better idea of what we spent so our budget the next year can be a little closer to what we actually spent. Thank you. And I, I forgot to say this. Kelly uh, introduced Kelly who took my budget. Thank you. <laughs> uh, but so this is a budget proposal, how much we anticipate spending actually in 2022. Two, we spent less than what we proposed to spend. Um, we did come in slightly with our giving a little bit less than what we spent, but we spent less than we proposed. Does that make sense? So that is, that is exciting. It means we're responsible with our money. Uh, we just need more of it. Okay, so. I have a question. Yes. So, so the question is why, why the title is what it is on this. Um, well, we wanted to make them all consistent and have a team on, on each of them. Uh, and, and our Sunday morning is a Sunday morning celebration service. We consider it a celebration service, a worship and celebration service. So 100 goes everything on Sunday morning. So we call it a worship and celebration team because it truly is our time of worship and a time where we can celebrate uh, coming to God collectively and worshiping him. Okay. Yeah, good question. Nope, it's good. A lot of people look at worship as the singing of music. Correct, yeah. There's a lot of acts of worship, correct. Good. Uh, any other questions before I move on to 200? I don't want to speed through this too fast, but I also want to honor your time. So, uh, 200. Uh, the 200 group is everything we do to get people of our church connected and also people to come to our church and call Compass Church home. Uh, that's, that's everything here. So we have a budget for core groups. <coughs> that can be a number of things. It could be babysitting. If our core groups have uh, needs for uh, books, sometimes if a, group, if a core group does a, gr a, a, a book study um, and some people in the, in the group can't afford that book, the church will come along and buy that book for them just to make sure that they're in there and they're, stud they're, they're able to be part of that group. Uh, women's ministry, uh, we have a lot of... $130, but women, women are very responsible, uh, as we'll see, more responsible than men, but uh, as, a, as a general rule. But women's ministry is at $130 a month. They, they typically pay back all the money they spend through their events. Uh, men's ministry, um, we uh, have 
don't do that as much. But, <laughs> but men's ministry is, is there to, to, like last Monday night when we did the, uh, the national championship football game event, um, we do ask people to pay $5 for all the stuff that, that goes into putting that on. Um, sometimes that isn't even matched, sometimes it's not, um, but the money there is not important, connecting people are. Um, we were excited to have uh, people there that don't typically come to Compass events, and we also had people there who come, on Compa- who come to Compass but don't often get to hang out uh, with Compass people other than Sunday morning. So the men's and ministry events that are, or categories, that's what it is. Uh, growth tracks are our uh, Compass U, our True North, both or all three partnership uh, discovery and mission. Uh, that's for all those materials. So for partnership, we put together a binder for people. Uh, those binders cost between eight and twelve dollars a piece to put together. Uh, so that's why that's budgeted a hundred dollars per month. Family events um, are things that we put on specifically for families. Those could be anything to from assisting with um, a campout or uh, or or other family events. And then finally. As Kelly was saying, there's some things here that we don't currently have, but we're hoping to have. That's 206, the interns. Um, we, we hope to uh, reinvigorate our intern program and get interns in here, um, working with uh, youth and technology and all kinds of areas that we can, we can get interns in here to invest in the people who come to Compass. Uh, that leads to 660 a month, which is 7920 a year, um, and that's our connection and growth teams. Any questions with that category? All right. Care team is Kelly, because Kelly is the most caring staff member we have. Wow. Um, <clears throat> under care team, we have three areas, family care, community care, and global care. Family care, you'll notice, is the highest, and that has to do with, like, if people in our church have needs that go to Compass and, like, they need a bump on rent or a bump on food or a bump on gas or whatever it might be, um, we are able to help them out. And so that's what that money goes toward. Uh, community care goes toward uh, anybody in the community that might need some help um, with that. And uh, also under community care, um, I think that's where we... Um, my brain's dead on this, but... And that we give support the giving plate through that? Yes. So we support the giving plate and bend $100 a month. And that money comes out of our community care fund. They're a community food bank that we feel do, does a great job. That's who the green bags goes to that we do, hand out when we pass those out. Um, and they're a faith-based organization. And so we support them $100 a month out of that. And then global care would be if there is some need in the world, somebody brings up and says, hey, you know, this happened. And, and can we, you know, help out in this area, something that's going on around the world, then we would be able to have money to send to that to help them out. And like, like you say, sometimes we spend some of this money, like, I don't think we spent all like $4,800 for uh, family care this last year. But if we had those needs, we would have the money set aside to do that. So that's what that means, uh, care team. Any questions on that? Anybody? Okay. All right. Moving along. Uh, music and tech team, uh, Sarah and I come together uh, in this category. Um, Sarah, if you want to say anything, you're more than welcome to come up here. If you don't, I'll just go through it. Uh, for the music and team building, as well as the music equipment and maintenance, that is all uh, kind of Sarah's area, the web and social media design, as well as the tech team equipment on the next page, that's, that's, that's my area. So um, we put together a proposal, how much we think we need. <coughs> one, one of the things that we truly believe in is if, excuse me, if our goal is to have a group up front leading us in worship collectively, then they need to come together and build that community. So when they're up here, they are a community of believers that are leading another community of believers in worshiping the Lord. Um, so that's the, that's the 401 right there. Musical equipment and maintenance, I... I I think that's self-explanatory, but if we need to repair anything or buy anything new that's, that's strictly for the musical worship part of our service, that's what it comes out of. Web and social media is $200 um, a month. Um, that goes for things uh, like um, we, have, we, have a, we, we are part of a subscription service that we can use that automatically makes social media posts. Um, and then we pay for uh, 
like memberships to different web organizations that helps us make a presence online that helps share the, share the mission of God um, and the mission of Compass. And then the tech team equipment and maintenance is 350 a month. That's, that's anything that deals with us live streaming, any cameras, um, any computers for staff members, any of those, mem any of those opportunities or, or objects. So the total music and tech team is $1,000. It's $12,000 a year. Um, that does not include any big purchases. Um, later on, we'll talk about capital campaigns or capital, uh, capital expenses. That's later on. Um, but those will come there. So a few years ago, you may or may not remember that we bought a techno technology package which included the cameras, another computer. That came out of our, that would come out of our capital expenses fund, not of our, out of our tech fund, even though it goes towards the tech ministry. Uh, the, the expense for the wall, building wall is a capital expense as well. So, um, so tech team equipment and maintenance is, is normal maintenance and uh, repurchases that we need. So if somebody had a really old computer, we'd put that, we, we'd buy a new computer for them. We don't currently have that, but if we did, that's what it would come out of. But capital expenses would be if one of our $2,000 cameras broke and we had to buy another one, that would come out of capital expenses. So hopefully I didn't muddy that water too, too bad. But those are the four categories under the music and tech team. Are there any questions about any of those areas or, or why the amount is what it is? We do. Right. And, and our, you know, like the subscription to help with our online mm -hmm. stuff. Is that all panning out as we go? It is. At, at this point, we have the knowledge, uh, but as scripture says, you, you got to pray for the workers. The harvest is plentiful. The workers are few. Um, so in, within our music and tech teams, we, do, we can always use more workers, but, but we do have a better grasp on it. Uh, and probably having that better grasp helps us understand that we do need more people to, to help us out in those areas. But yes, uh, we learned on the fly when we, when we went online and, and, and streamed services and uh, COVID happened and things closed down. And we had to kind of maneuver to an online presence. Uh, we learned a lot through that experience and we continue some of that uh, to this day. Are we finding out the online uh, side of it showing our services so the, the effectiveness of the online service, uh, Doug's question, I'm repeating it so it's in the microphone and online, um, but the effectiveness now isn't for people to watch our service live. The effectiveness now is more to put our services out there so if somebody moves to Bend or is searching for a church, they can see our services and then make a judgment if they want to come to Compass. That's, that's really where the, uh, the expense is used now or geared towards. Um, we, I mean... We also stream through a, a, a company or, or a service that we have to pay for monthly as well. So that goes back into the, uh, the web and, and social media 403 as well. So any other questions? All right. And now we have kids and youth. That is Lexi, her area. Here she goes. Boop. I do have a fan club. It's so fun. Um, so kids and youth, we've got, uh, it takes money to love kids because they need food. Trust me on this, Sunday mornings go so much more smoothly if they're just munching on some pretzels. It goes so much better. Youth group goes so much better if there's food involved first. Um, food is a big motivator for kids and it's a big focuser. So um, we spend money on that. We spend money on crafts or other activities on a Sunday morning that helps re-emphasize the lesson that they've learned. Another big thing that comes out of kids and youth is money for curriculum. We want to make sure that we have theologically sound, developmentally appropriate curriculum. And what that does is it allows me to have more time in the week that I've already got some thing out there. I can build off of it and I can take the time that I would write lessons and I can go spend it with the kids and make sure I'm doing relational ministry too. Um, so that's a really big deal. Uh, you'll see under here our biggest outreach event is its own budget category. It's Trunk or Treat. We see hundreds of kids come through that never would otherwise step through the doors of a church. And that does carry over sometimes, and we do get new families out of it. So it's community care, it's church growth, um, and it's loving kids in a way that is super um, tangible and, um, I forgot the word, it flew away. 
it's a good event. Um, we also have a budgeted item for, um, a line item for mission trips. We think that sending youth on mission trips is really important. Um, and so we have some age appropriate ones that we uh, try to do with middle school and with high school. And this does a couple things. It, it grows the kids closer together as a group. And then it also helps impact, of course, the community as well. Um, another thing is church camps, similar idea here. Uh, we need to send some adult leaders to go to camp with the kids. Uh, we need to be able to get the gas there and back. Sometimes kids need scholarships to be able to go to these life-changing camps, and they are life-changing. If you've ever been to CIY, it, it rocks your world. Um, so that's what that one's for. Um, we have our, this is a really cool one. We have our leaders and training lit group. Um, and so they meet. Sleepy teenagers. Sleepy teenagers meet at 7 a.m. on a Monday, the worst day, to learn about God. Right now we're in Revelation. Can you imagine how much motivation these kids have? They are getting their butts here to church at 7 a.m. on a Monday to read through Revelation. And they're, they're doing awesome. They're great. And so part of that is they also have some service hours. And in exchange for those service hours and as um, a reward for diving deeper into God's word and doing that Bible study, there is a scholarship that they can apply to either um, a church camp or they can apply it to a mission trip. Um, so that's what that one is. And then here's another one of those items where we might not have it quite yet, but it's in there in case we get it, is college. And hopefully at some point we do have a college group. So if it pops up, we've got it. And if not, it doesn't get spent. So our totals here is about $1,700 a month, and we do come in under that most of the time. And then um, yearly is about 20000 Any questions? Andrea's got a question. Kids and youth, mm -hmm. how is that separate again? So kids has its own budget. Youth has its own budget. Um, youth has a few different people who who use it. Kids is just me at this point. Um, and so for kids, you'll have things like everything I do for a Sunday morning in K through five or in pre-K that comes out of kids. Past 45 comes out of kids. Um, parents night out also comes out of kids. That's a really big outreach that we do. Um, if I take out like a parent to coffee to come check in with them and their kid, because you know, the 30 seconds when they're picking up their kid is not necessarily the most valuable time um, that comes out of there. So anything that has to do with somebody who's fifth grade and under, kids. If it's sixth grade and above, similar things. If it's um, a Wednesday night thing, if I'm meeting up with a parent of um, a middle schooler or a high schooler, it comes out of that. Um, girls Bible study things. And here's a cool one. So because we have this availability and we have this budget, there's a girl I've been trying to get into Bible study for a while now. She doesn't like to go very frequently, but I said this Wednesday, I'll buy you Dutch if you stay, and she stayed. So sometimes it's just those extra little things that gets, kid, that gets kids hooked, and it gets them to stay, and they get to hear about God. So basically fifth and under, kids, sixth and up, youth. Anything that we might need, including curriculum. Oh, I bribe for Jesus all the time. I am not against bribing for Jesus. And in fact, this kid's mom knows I bribed her for Jesus and she helped me with this. So, you know, bribing. Questions? You go, Lexi. I don't know who's next. Oh, I could read. Kelly's next. So I'm gonna talk about uh, Compass Missions. And uh, the mission team, which is number 600. And so Compass Mission is $100 a month, and that is designated towards someone in our church who might go on a mission trip. And so Grace Parsons, you remember Grace? Uh, we supported her $600 from our account for the time that she's going to be gone to YWAM. And so we're a home church. She's from our church, and so we felt like if we have students who God leads to go somewhere, we should be behind them. And so we put that in. I mean, people supported her individually from our church, but we supported her as a church, as a missionary. So Grace would fit into that category. Under local missions, we have $200 a month, and we have two local missionaries that we support. Uh, we support Steve Fox. Have you seen him at church? And maybe you don't know this, but Steve Fox is a regional director for Young Life. 
And he's been going to our church for like five or six years. And we thought, here's a guy that goes to our church that's the head of Young Life. And he has to raise all his support. We should support him. He's a member of our church. He's a partner with us. And so we support him $100 a month. And then this last year, we decided that we were going to support Kent Morrow $100 a month. Because that's where our kids go. They do a great job of reaching kids and teenagers for the Lord. And um, our men's camp is, went there, and we had a great time. We plan on going back. And so we put them in our budget as a local mission in our area that we would support. So that's who we support locally. And then we have, uh, like, um, Compass World Missions, and we have $200. So we support the Marnos. You remember them? They came to our church and um, he played the guitar, and they, they're with um, Josiah Ministries, and they are in I can't, Slovenia. Yeah. And so here's a picture of them. She's pregnant now, going to have their first kid. And so we support them $100 a month. And if you remember this last time, they had the Kolars with them. I can't say they're her, and boy, her name's really tough to. They came with them, remember that? And they are from Slovenia. And came to faith through Josiah Ministries and now are going to work for Josiah Ministries. And we felt like they have a really hard time raising support because, first of all, in the states where the Marnos have a lot of contacts, they have no contacts. So we support them $50 a month as they're trying to get their support together to go full time. And then if you remember, uh, those of you who've gone to Mexico, you know Ricardo. And uh, Ricardo, we support him $50 a month with Hugo Ministries. And Ricardo is the, now he's one of the pastors of the local church there, as well as he does construction, leads the groups that go out to build these houses. And so a couple years ago, Jimmy and um, those guys came up and said, hey, this guy, you know, they, he needs support or he's going to have to quit what he's doing. And so we decided then to support him $50 a month. So that's who we support when it comes to world missions. And so that's how our missions budget is given out. And you'll notice that we're putting together on the wall there who we support in the back. And yeah, as you walk out, and hopefully by next week, we'll have all the pictures of these people up there so people who walk out will know, here's our missionaries. These are the people that we support. And so we feel really good about that. We feel good that we, we're not a big church by any means, but, you know, you, you give and God blesses you for giving. And so any questions on that? I can talk about that. Um, Compass Mexico is 1,200, which seems like a lot, and 14,400, which is a lot, but it's expensive for us to go to Mexico. And um, we try to support it as much as we can because without it, the amount that the students would have to raise would be pretty overwhelming. And we probably wouldn't have that many go because the number of people you have go is determined by how much it costs. That's just the way that it is. So we help support that because we feel strongly that that's a vital ministry to, for our students as well as for the adults that go. And um, I'm a firm believer in that because being a youth pastor for all the years that I was going on mission trips with my youth group, it was the best thing I ever did for my students, the very best thing. And um, so anyway... Uh, out of that, out of the mission trips that I led, we had four or five or six people that went into full-time missions based on that because they realized God can use them in the world, and the world's a needy place. So I'm excited about that, and that's why we have that much money involved. It uh, used to be we just kind of absorbed it, <laughs> and then all of a sudden we decided we got to make a category for this so we know how much we spend and we can budget for it so people know that this is a priority. You'll notice how big that is, but that's because we feel it's a priority for our church, and that's why it's what it is. Any questions on that? Okay. Thank you, Kelly. <clears throat> He's even got props. Um, <laughs> category 700 is our greatest category. It's our leadership team. Uh, leadership team personnel, that is, that is staff salaries. Um, we won't go individually into what people make individually, but that's the total of what we spend per month and per year on all of our salaries. Leadership team benefits are health insurance, um, as well as HSA, uh, and leadership team education and training. That's if we either want to purchase things to go over as a staff. So last year we went over uh, a book 
called So the Next Generation Will Know. Um, and that was a book that was written by Sean McDowell and we read it as a staff. Uh, so Compass paid for our staff members to get those books so we could read them, we could write in them, we could highlight them uh, and really learn from them. Um, it also goes into uh, if, if we wanted to go to a leadership seminar somewhere, that it would come out of that budget as well. Um, this is the biggest uh, category that we have here. Um, we do believe that people who are in ministry should be well taken care of. Um, I mean, that's not self-serving coming from me, but <laughs> I truly don't mean it that way. Uh, but we, we work hard to make our staff salaries competitive with the area we live in. Uh, and um, fortunately or unfortunately, depending on how you're looking at it, Ben's a really expensive place to live. Um, so uh, actually, this, this budget has gone down a, a great deal um, from last year. Uh, and, and if I'm open and blunt, it's because we no longer have a full-time youth pastor on staff. Um, so our yearly budget here has, is lessened by about 70 to 80 grand a year. Um, and what that has done for us is it actually brings us closer to being even uh, within our proposed budget and the amount that we get each year. Uh, we, as, as COVID happened, as a transition of, of, of our lead pastor leaving, um, we found ourselves in a spot where we were below uh, what we were spending. We were in the red, um, but we have gotten closer and closer as time goes on from a couple things. The big one is, is not employing as many people, um, but the hopeful one is that our giving is, is increasing um, each month. So uh, that is exciting. So our, our treasurer, if we get below a certain value within our savings account, dips into our, I'm sorry, our checking account, <coughs> dips into our savings account and brings it, keeps it at a certain level. Um, and we are, we are thankful that the third quarter this past year, our treasurer did not have to go into our savings at all. So that's really, that's really exciting. Um, that did come from a, from a couple generous people that decided to give last minute, which I'm always thankful for. Um, but we, we try to be obedient and, and tithe and give uh, while still being responsible in what we're doing without sacrificing uh, reaching out for Christ. So with that being said, 700 is our biggest value uh, on this. Um, but are there any questions on that? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, so I don't know quite how to ask this, but I mean, the youth is huge, right? Mm -hmm. And so if we took that money out of the budget, then how do we kind of keep it huge? Good question. So right, right now, Compass... Uh, and the elder board of Compass is looking to hire a, another youth pastor. We're in that process of finding one. Uh, the position we offered out is a part-time position, not a full-time position. So it will add to this number when we do hire somebody. It won't add to as much as it was before because we aren't hiring a full-time person with benefits. So it will add money. Um, the money from the youth pastor doesn't take away from the youth budget. It's simply salary and benefits that, that's represented here. Um, right now, Lexi and I uh, are, are leading the youth ministries, um, but we're looking for someone to take over specifically middle school and high school so that that person can invest truly in, in our young people because that's really important. So did that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. I have another question. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Two for one deal. So, so if our, <clears throat> the, these numbers aren't solid because we haven't gotten the fourth quarter uh, information back, um, but we do know we didn't have to dip into savings, uh, so, it's, so it's fairly accurate. Um, last year, we came in $88,000 below, so our giving was $88,000 less than what we spent, roughly. Um, if this budget is proposed and followed, and our current giving from from the last quarter continues, because we can look at that, um, then we were finished about ten to $20,000 below. So we're close. That's a huge improvement. Yeah, huge improvement. Not, not quite there, but, but a huge improvement. But we'll know those numbers more solidly when our accountant, um, which we'll talk about our accountant in the next section, but our accountant gets that information and sends it to us. She does that quarterly. She just hasn't gotten October, November, December's information to us yet. Third question? Um, Three for one? I can wait until after. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. It's, re it's related. I mean, when you, when you look at, like, advertising signs, it's like, post-COVID, you know, 
COVID, like what are the ways that that we that we grow? So that, yeah. That we, so. So signage and advertising, just to cover that really quick. Um, when we moved in here, we had a, a, a large cost for signage because we had to get all new signs for the whole building. Now the cost is, is less, but it's consistent. So if we need to update uh, any, any, any signs or literature, as Kelly said, we, had, we just ordered your invited cards. So our people who call Compass Home can take those cards and give it to their friends. It has some of our information on it. Um, we also pay for, strategically and periodically, we pay for online advertisements. So like a Facebook advertisement, if someone goes onto Facebook and, and they're, they're looking at something on the side of Facebook, you'll notice that there's some advertisements there. We have paid for advertisements every once in a while for our Easter service or our Christmas service or uh, if we're starting new series, um, we, we've done, done those things. So the, the major way that we advertise still remains word of mouth. That's, but we want to assist as much as possible. So those your invited cards are there. Um, to assist people as possible. But there is a big area of, of advertising, spreading the word on, online and in person. So, um, so we, you know, shortly we'll need to order new signs for our sandwich boards because they're just getting old. So we'll have to, that'll come out of the signage and advertising thing too. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Any other questions on category 700 before we move to the last category? All right. Well, bringing in the closer, Kelly Jones. So our last category is called stewardship team. And when it says accounting, that is we uh, have a CPA firm that does all our books for us. Ken Stinkamp is our treasurer. And he keeps in contact of everything and knows what's going on with everything. And he's our local person that we would talk to. But we do have a CPA firm that does all our major accounting for us. And um, that has been a good thing. It's not cheap by any means, but it's a good way to know that we have the person there has no pony in the race and just can be honest about where we're at and all of that and does a really good job of that and holds us accountable. Um, our vehicle is we have a party bus that we still own and uh, it's, if you've never seen it, then you just, you're missing out on a tremendous blessing. And uh, we've been trying to sell that for a while and I think maybe this year could be the year to get rid of it. And the reason it's so high is because they've worked on it a lot and it's real expensive to get worked on. But hopefully we're going to sell it this year. Our goal would be to sell the party bus and to have enough money to be able to purchase a 15-passenger van that we could use more consistently. In a party bus, it's a great boss. It holds 25 or something people, but you have to have a CDL drive it, which cuts down who can drive it and all of those things. So you know what I'm talking about. So that's why that money's in there for that. Uh, banking is a small amount. That's just our banking fees with the bank that we use. Push pay is the accounting service that we use, like when you want to give online. It goes through push pay. It's also sh church management. It does a lot of other things. And we pay a monthly fee for that. And so that's what that is. App, email. Yeah, app, email, and all those kind of things go through push pay. Uh, facilities is the building here that we use. And um, it's... 5600 a month for both. We have two buildings, actually. Um, and so that's what the payment for that, that's a lease agreement. And we're under lease for another two years? Uh, no, one, one more year that we renegotiate. We negotiate, okay, so. The other building's a storage unit, make sure you say that. Oh yeah, and we have a storage unit that's over on, uh, on Wilson. Yeah, we don't have two campuses. The storage unit is, we have no storage here. So the storage unit, we have fairly well organized and fairly well full. <laughs> so, uh, but we use it all the time to go and grab all, you know, trunk or treat stuff's in there, Christmas stuff's in there, extra tables and chairs we have in there. So we go in there and, and you know, use it. So that's what that is. Uh, materials and services would be any kind of material, paper, and all of those kind of things that we use on a, a weekly basis. Uh, any type of, uh, like, Pink, yeah, ink, pens, all those kind of things come out of that, yeah. And, uh, and then capital expenses is, it a, is something we set aside, like for example, like Matt would say, if we have a major purchase that comes up in the year, we have this money to use it for it. It would also be like if we decide we're gonna paint the building on the inside, we have money set aside that we could use to paint the building. 
uh, if we decide to do that. So that's what capital expenses is about. And uh, so, uh, any questions on that? Yes. <laughs> I was going to make up something. <laughs> uh, so capital expenses includes both things we're preparing for that are big purchases and things that are unforeseen. Um, so this number is based on things in the past that were unforeseen as well as things that we plan for. So um, some... Some of the things we're planning for, the next big thing we're planning for at some point is to replace the carpets in here. Um, we are waiting until we renegotiate our, our lease terms to make sure that if we do replace the carpet in here, we're not replacing it for a year and then leaving. Um, but those are the kind of things that we think about. So it, so it includes both of those. Things we are planning out um, and things that are unforeseen. That answer your question? Okay. What's it cost, the carpet? Like uh, lots. No, I don't know. Uh, we, we haven't looked into that yet because we, we, we are specifically planning not to do it this year. We're looking to do it next year, so we'll explore it for next year's budget. <coughs> so this number may go up next year, but that's with planning to do something big. When you yeah. take the chairs out like for the women's dinner, you're like, whoa. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> well, there's some parts that are coming up, and, 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 and the rug is great. It's just, it's just been here a while. Yeah. yeah. So that's kind of the next big thing we talk about. And we've talked about uh, replacing all the the black chairs with chairs. Yeah. So that would be a uh, capital expense as well. That would have like pockets in the back so you could put the connection cards in the pockets in a pen or whatever. We talked about doing that. It's yeah. cheap. It's around five grand. Yeah, to get 100 chairs would be five, five grand about. But, um, but those are the kind of things that go into both but that would planning and unforeseen. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. All right. Um, so the next slide, we have the totals. So if you can go to it, this is, the, this is the monthly and yearly total of all eight categories. You have that on the bottom of your page anyway. Um, but the monthly total is uh, uh, almost $37,000 a month to, to run the church and all its ministries. And yearly, it's 442000 Last year's budget, again, was five oh seven, So it was a little bit more expensive. Uh, but again, there's, there's a reason for that. Um, this number will go up if and when we hire a youth pastor. Um, most likely it will go up by 20, 12 or $24,000 a year because we're hiring part-time. We're not hiring full-time. Um, but we'll wait to see what, what God does with that. So um, I'm excited for whatever God does. I'm anticipating God does something great soon because um, I know he's a good, do good God and uh, I, don't, uh, uh, I, don't, I don't have enough bandwidth to continue running it. <laughs> And I make Lexi do all the games because I'm not a fun game guy. <clears throat> so it's going to be better. For, I'm fun at playing. I'm not fun at making. <laughs> uh, anyway, so are there any other questions on the budget before we close here today? I'd, uh, we're, we're at about 50 minutes, um, 45 minutes or so. So we're, we've done really good. I try to keep it at an hour tops. Um, Ray, you have a question? I have two questions. Two questions. Um, there's no number on your yearly offering. Yeah, so... So we are waiting to see the total amount that came in for the third quarter and use that to project the yearly offerings. We don't have that information yet. I'm sorry, fourth quarter, yes. Fourth quarter is what I meant. So once we get those, those numbers, it's easier to project what next year will be. That's why we haven't put those numbers down yet. Um, if we did it on the first three quarters, they might not be re uh, representative of the increase in giving that we've had. Can you give us a feel for how close it is to the expenses? Yeah, so if the amount of money that comes came in this year projected continues next year will be about ten to twenty thousand dollars under budget. Okay, that leads to my second question. Yep. Can you give me a ballpark feeling for your reserve fund or your savings or whatever you call it? Yeah, yeah, no problem. We we, we have uh, I haven't gotten an updated value yet. I I think I'm not asking for specific Right. It's it's what we have in reserve is about three hundred thousand um, dollars. so if we if uh, then I have <laughs> Even your daughter didn't have three questions. Okay, that's okay. How did that come about? So before our previous pastor, Drew, left, uh, we, were a, we were in the Boys and Girls Club, which cost $1,900 a month with, with no other uh, costs associated with it. 
So the amount that we were, that we were uh, taking in before COVID happened was more than we're taking in now. And the, co the output cost was less than what it is now because now we have a 24 seven building. Uh, so we were able to put money in savings throughout that time. Um, so we are very fortunate to have that money in reserve so we can continue to do ministry. Um, but it, as, as we said uh, during the, um, I did a financial talk. Uh, well, actually we did a generosity series this year. And, and the first one of, first part of that, we talked about how we have a drop dead date. If giving doesn't change, how, how long could we go before we have to close our doors? Uh, that's about four years right now, if giving doesn't change. If giving goes down, then that lessens the time. If giving goes up, it increases the time. Um, so that's, that's how we're working within our budget now. We want to make sure that we aren't, we aren't being frivolous with our money while at the same time uh, working to do what we can to make Jesus known while we have the opportunity to do so. We, we would hate to not spend the money and then uh, know that there are people we could have reached uh, if we had used the money. So uh, that's, that's our, our current mindset as a church leadership. Does that answer your question? Okay. Or the rapture happens and we need all that. Right. <laughs> Yes. If you had more, what would you do with it? I mean, in all these categories. Um, so, so category, Kelly and I were talking about this this week. I said, my, my bold prayer this year is that we grow like gangbusters, we get more money, um, and we're able to expand our campus. Um, so, so we would probably increase our, our, the amount we're spending on our building. Um, that would come from, if, if more people came, we'd grow out of this space. Um, but we could potentially get a bigger space and make our kids' area bigger and more expansive. And, and, uh, and then I would also increase the amount that we use in our youth and kids' services to make that gangbusters as well. Um, a number of years ago, we used to have a summer camp called Adventure Days. We loved it. We don't have the space for it here. Um, and if we rent a place, if we rent a school, it's really expensive to rent it for a whole week because we, we would have to rent it 24-7 for a whole week. Um, so that's, that'd be something I did. Uh, there, there, there's lots of things I dream about doing um, and still continue to pray about them. So uh, add those to your prayer list that that, that can happen because we, we, we could do so much more if we didn't have to worry about not dipping into our savings as much. Yeah. So those are the three things off the top of my head. And Kelly would want a, a bigger workspace and in, 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 <laughs> I'm just messing around with Kelly. <laughs> I do have a shelf in the back of my truck we have to get out later, Bye. but we can do it tomorrow. Okay. Um, any other questions overall on the budget? Um, obviously, we like to have a good time doing ministry as well. That doesn't cost anything. That's just attitude. All right. Um, so, any other questions before we close in prayer and, and enjoy the rest of our not sunny Sunday? Yeah. So giving will be ten to twenty thousand dollars less than we spend if we spend our whole budget. Okay. Yeah. Good point of clarification. Thank you. And that's a that's a that's an estimate that Ken and I talked about earlier today. Again, it's a it's a total estimate. We won't know until probably next week we'll get that report. And if you guys have questions about that at any time, you can come talk to me or, or any staff member and, and, and we can we want to be, again, as transparent and as open as what we do with our money as possible, because I think it's important. People should know what their church does and, and, and trust what their church does to, to make the gospel known, which is our number one goal. I just, yeah. I just want to say, it's not a question. I just want to thank each of you in leadership for all that you do, for being accountable, for all the work that you do. We love you. Hmm. all the time and, and how we are so blessed to have this for our youth that we can come in and, and do youth and do Bible studies and ladies hmm. functions and men functions and we are very, very blessed to have this. Yeah, we, we, we are very blessed in so many ways and thank you for that. It, uh, um, I, I, I also am blessed by our leadership team. Our elders and our staff are, are so amazing to work with and, and for. It's, 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 it's a it's a wonderful opportunity that, that we are afforded here. So thank you for that. 
Any other questions or comments? All right, well, let's, let's close in prayer. If anything comes up, feel free to reach out to us um, or just stop us on a Sunday or whenever other day we're here and you're here too. All right, let's pray. <coughs> hey, Lord, we thank you again for this opportunity to come to you and, uh, and be open and, and uh, transparent with, with the amount of money that we're hoping to spend this year um, to make you known, uh, reaching <coughs> everything from, from young kids uh, in our kids' ministry to, to parents of those kids for our parents' night out to uh, people who don't even come to church here for our trunk or treat to our youth group where kids can invite their friends, their unbelieving friends, to just have a fun time talking about who, who this Jesus really is to our Sunday morning service, um, which is really the flagship of our church. Um, and Lord, we just thank you for uh, just allowing us to come and worship you um, and allowing us as, as imperfect and flawed people to move your perfect message forward and let people know who you are. God, we love you and we serve you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Thank you.